Well, hello there. Today I'm going to be showing off the Railroad Lady Banjo. I call it the Railroad Lady Banjo because the body is made out of a piston ring liner from a diesel locomotive, which makes for a rather heavy banjo, but sounds great. Now let me do a little uh, close-up here to show you the various parts. The body is a railroad diesel locomotive piston ring liner. The shoe brackets are grounding lugs from the electrical supply aisle at the big box remodeling store. The J hooks are motorcycle spokes that I cut down and rethreaded. The tailpiece is a fork, and the head is clear, as you can see the fork handle in there. I, I bent it, leaving it sticking out that way so you can see the design on it. And the head is clear because originally there was going to be some artwork on the inside of the resonator, and I figure I'll leave that up to the final owner. Now, I found this elaborately inlaid tray at a thrift store and I cut it down, I made new uh, edge pieces for it. And I had enough leftover pieces from the cut down that I could use them for position markers up and down the neck. Now you'll notice, unlike most five string banjos, this doesn't have the peg sticking out here. This was made with a full length five string, genuine bone nut, and the strings are spaced a bit further apart than your average banjo. They're about the spacing that a classical guitar would have. And the reason I don't do a fifth string peg right here is that, in my opinion, and if any of my opinions were humble, it would be my humble opinion, in my opinion, the short drone string here goes back to the days of gourd banjos with horsehair strings and to get a high note off a string if you just make it the string shorter the string gets progressively higher and it's easier to peg off with a string a piece of horsehair here than it would be to tighten it up to, to but steel strings for example the steel string uh, 12 string guitar has a, a G, a pair of G's, and the octave G is the full length of the instrument, just like that, and it works. So, and the advantage to that is when you're playing in another key other than the usual G or C, when you put the capo on, all your strings are still in relative pitch. It's still an open chord. But if you're the kind of person that wants to have spikes up there, tune this back down so it matches the first string and put in spikes. It's your banjo. Play it any way you want. Anyway, here's how it sounds. Uh, it's a, I call it the Railroad Lady, so I think we should do a railroad song. Um... I call it Railroad Lady. So, how about, um, a good old train wreck song for demonstration of the sound. They gave me some word down here. Monroe, Virginia, saying, Steve, you're way behind the time. This is not 38, but it's only 97. You gotta make Spencer on time. <clears throat> That's Seeger picking, as I do it. And here is a more bluegrassy style.
and if you're wearing a t-shirt with a particularly interesting um, artwork on the front, you can take the resonator off. It's held on by some very powerful magnets and it just peels right off. No nuts, screws, or bolts required. And then people can see whatever you've got written there. And it changes the tone a little. Looks good, sounds good, and I'm selling it. Resonator pops right back on. Looks good, sounds good, and it's for sale. <laughs>